Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning we will uh, go further to uh, understand in the area of giving, when should I give? When should I give? When should I give? When? When should I give that my giving will be truly acceptable? Particularly when we look into our hands and we find out that what we have in our hands is so small, is so little, is so insignificant to what is needed. I want you to understand that the will of God is to bless and increase his people. And God wants us to have that joy that is in giving. The joy that is in giving. The joy that, oh, I have also contributed to the need of a brother or a sister. I have contributed to the progress of the work of God. But Satan sometimes robs us of that joy by convincing us that what we have in our hand is too small or insignificant. So we feel like we don't have what to give. So we will say something like, I cannot give now or I cannot give today. I cannot give at this time. Why? What I have is too small. So we say, oh, maybe I'll give next week. I hope to have something, you know, more substantial next week. And so we miss the opportunity of obeying God promptly at the moment God wants us to obey him. Amen. Amen. God doesn't want us to carry that uh, insufficiency mentality. God, God doesn't want us to carry scarcity mentality. Because that scarcity or insufficiency mentality towards the brethren or towards the gospel uh, is what Satan takes advantage of to lead us into poverty and lack. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Because if you look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, Proverbs 11, now we look at what it says in verse 24. It says, it says, one gives freely. That is, there is someone who gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another, that is another person, withholds what he should give. He withholds what he should give, and what happens? And only suffers want or poverty. <laughs> Amen. So there is someone who gives freely. He has what he has, from what he has, he gives freely. He gives cheerfully. And the Bible says he grows richer thereby. 
But there is another person who withholds. He withholds. He keeps back what he's supposed to give. And so he ends up lacking. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that it is very dangerous for us to buy that thought, that mentality from the flesh or from the devil uh, or from the people of the world that what we have in our hand is too small or insignificant when it comes to the time of giving to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We must not allow the devil tell us that oh we are poor or we are we we what we have is uh, uh, I mean comparatively too small. Other people have big things. They are giving big big money. Me, what do I have? Me, I just have this 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 money. Other people are giving. Okay, well, other people are giving one million. They are giving me uh, fifteen CD. They are giving that. What do I have? I have just this uh, five city. What can I do with the five city? Uh, no. If you think like that, the devil will rob you of the joy and the benefits that God wants you to have in that moment of giving. Amen. You, re you remember that uh, God sent his servant prophet Elijah to a widow yes. in, in the town called Zarephat. Zarephat. Amen. Amen. God said to his servant, he said, go to the city of Zarephath, and uh, I have commanded the widow there to take care of you. God said, hello, pay attention. God said, I have commanded her, I have commanded her, to cater for you, to provide for you. I have commanded her to provide for you. But when Elijah got there and met the woman, the woman was very poor. In fact, she didn't even have enough food for herself. Not to talk of sharing with another person. Amen. You know the story in First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. You can start enjoying the story from verse 7 to verse 15. Verse 7 to verse 15. First Kings chapter 17 from verse 7 to verse 15. You'll find a story there. Amen. You know, the man of God said, please give me some water. She was going to get the water. But the man of God said, please put one small bread for me. Huh? Ah, that one is okay. Make I tell you the truth. I no get I no get bread. Oh. What I have is just a handful, a handful of flour. That is flour you can pour in your hand like this. That's what I have. And small oil. I will mix everything, bake small tontolo bread like this. Eh? Me and my son will mind, we'll drink, we eat it, and after we eat it, we get ready for death. Amen. 
And yet, Elijah said, make a little cake for me first. Me first. Make a little cake for me out of that little. That which you say is insignificant, is too small, is insufficient for you. Make, take a little of it and make a small cake for me first. In verse 13, the Bible says, And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make a little cake out of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourselves and for your son. You see, even out of that little that she had, the man of God said, still make a little cake. You say it's not enough. Make a little cake for me. He now said in verse 14, For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be empty, shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. That was the word of God. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand something. God said to his servant, I have commanded, I have commanded the widow to take care of you. I have commanded her. The word is, I have commanded. It's a command. Amen. Amen. But here is the person that has been commanded to take care of the man of God. She didn't even have what, to, what was enough for herself. So where is the command? I want you to understand that the command was hanging on air. It was hanging. It was not resting. It was hanging. Hallelujah. Amen. It was overing on her head like that. Amen. Amen. She needed to take that step of faith uh, in seeing what she has, which she thought was not enough, was too small, was insignificant. She needed to change her mind and believe that it will be enough for both of for the three of them, herself, her son, and for Elijah, that it will be enough. She needed to believe it and take the step of faith by making something out of it for another person, giving to another person first. You understand? To take a mind away from herself, from being selfish or self-centered, to begin to think others. When she took that step, the blessing rested on her. It landed. Amen. Amen. If she did not take that step of faith, that blessing that has been commanded, commanded, will not rest on her. Because there are many other widows in Sarivat who could also qualify for that command. So if this one failed to take the step of faith, God will locate another widow in that same town and the blessing will rest. So she qualified herself for it by taking that step of faith. So when you are asked to give, 
and you feel that what you have in your hand is too small, it's insignificant. I can't give. I, I mean, I still need more money. Now they are saying we should give. We are saying we should. We have. We need money for the work of God. We need. Uh, uh, we need uh, and you say no. This one is not even enough. And you now, because of that mentality, refuse to give. Then you are not walking by faith. You are walking by the flesh. And so the Bible says, those who think, who mind the flesh, eh, they will reap corruption. You will reap corruption. But if you walk by the Spirit and give a, and you, you give the Lord first, out of that little one, out of that which looks insignificant, and you give to God first, you will see that the blessing of the Lord will rest on you. Amen. It's better God wanted to change the, 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 the situation of that widow. And so he sent his servant to her. Amen. Hello? Hi. What you think is too small, God still needs it. Amen. God needs it in order to change your life and situation. Amen. Amen. It's not for God, it's for your sake. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Even that little, that which you think is too small. Amen. Amen. So the widow connected with the command. The commanded blessing. By, by taking that step of faith, giving to the man of God first. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Sometimes we might even think that which we want, which God is prompting us to give to the servant of God or to the work of ministry, to ourselves, we might think, ah, uh -huh, is this not too small? Is this not, is it not insulting to the man of God? Why should I go and give him this guy? And the Holy Spirit says, go and give him. And you are saying, no, uh -uh, no, I'll wait. When I get, when I get Ganto, I get big one, Ganto, I get Ganto, like uh, 50 CD, 100 CD. Then I will go and give. Satan is deceiving you. You know why I know? My wife is here. She can bear testimony. And I've told some of you before. There was a time in this town when I needed 20 pesos. 20 pesos. How much is 20 pesos? What do you use to buy pure water? 20 pesos. I needed it desperately. There was a time I needed it. And I didn't have it. If God had ministered to one of you to come and give me that 20 pesos, you would say, ah, ah. No, but giving me that twenty percent would have been a great blessing to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you come to the New Testament, you will see the same thing. In the book of Mark, Mark chapter um, 12. This particular incident uh, uh, is given, is recorded twice for us. In the book of Mark chapter 12. Uh, I'll start reading from verse 41. It's a very popular story too. From verse 41. 
the book of Mark, chapter 12, from verse 41. And he, that is Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and washed the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he, he, that is Jesus, called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. Verse 44. Because they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Amen. Amen. We see how God values and how he sees our offering. He doesn't see as men see. The rich people were giving their own bem. Their offering was landing bem inside the box. Bem. Because it's heavy. Gold, silver. But she didn't have gold. She didn't have silver. She had copper coins. Copper coins. And not plenty, just two. And the two put together is equal to only one penny. One penny. That was not even enough to buy water in those days. And that's what she had. And she gave it in the moment when offering was being given. And Jesus said, my disciples come. I look into the record of heaven. And in heaven, her offering is far greater than everybody put together. Because she gave with, the, with, with what? Sacrifice. It's a sacrificial offering. <laughs> Now let's imagine that at the time of offering, this widow received the thought in her mind that, oh, what are these two copper coins? What can they do? See all these big, big men who they are giving. What can my own do among their offering? Let me keep my copper coin, Jerry. Ah, let me keep it. Let the big, big men be doing the offering. Do you think she would have earned the blessing that she received that day? <laughs> Therefore, don't despise your own offering. Don't despise your own little, huh? That little you have with you. Don't despise it. You know, for the sake of those who have bigger ones. When it comes to giving, don't despise it. Give your own. 
Yeto ikala sio. Ne, meka proba mole na nanda ganga tayi ya ima. Uche chumo uche tembe chete ni rasio ko uche ne. You remember the parable of Jesus? When he said a, a man gave five talents to one of his servants, he gave two to one, then he gave one to another one. You remember the story? Why did that one, the one that received one, why did he fail to do business with it? Because he looked at others, he compared himself to others. He said, uh-huh, oh God gave that one five. He gave this one two. He gave me only one. Oh, what can one do? Let me go and keep it, Jerry. What can one do? And when the boss came, you see how he was really, you know, put to shame. Amen. Amen. He despised his own one. And he went to bury it. Instead of giving it out, to invest it. To trade with it. He kept it. Hallelujah. And he lost it in the end. Amen. Don't ever consider your own that your own is comparatively insignificant. So when it's time for offering, give your own. Hello? Give your own. As long as it comes from your heart. God honors it. Don't say, oh, I want to wait until I have 50 CD, until I have 100 CD, until I have 1,000. Me too, then I will give. Oh, I don't have. What do I have? I have only one city. I have only two city. So what, what can I know? I can't, I can't give. No. That day, give that one that you have. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let us be smarter than the enemy. Let us never despise our own offering that is in our hands. What you have in your hand is not too small, neither is it too insignificant. It's not too small and it is not uh, insignificant. Don't buy that lie of the devil. That voice that tells you that what you have in your hand Oh, okay, it doesn't mean anything. It's too small. You can't give it. Oh, it's too small. Ah, if you give this one, how will you survive? If you give this one, how will you survive? Oh, it wants to rob you of the blessing of God. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. So we should not wait until we are very rich before we can give. Even if you consider yourself poor, that you are poor, you don't have, you only have small. Even in that you're small, out of that small, out of that little, still give. Let's see the book of 1 Corinthians chapter, 9, chapter 8. 1 Corinthians. Sorry, 2 Corinthians. I want to say 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I'm going to start reading from verse 1 to verse 4. I want you to pay attention. Verse 1 to 4. It says, Paul is speaking here. He says, he's talking to the Corinthians. He says, we want you to know, brothers, 
about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty, it's not just poverty, extreme poverty, have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Verse 3, for we have, for, for they gave, huh? even in the extreme poverty, they still gave, but they gave according to their means of their, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord. That means they were not pressured right to do it. They were not pressured. They were not forced to do it. Of their own accord. Amen. Verse 4. Begging us earnestly. They were even begging us. They were begging us. They were begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. That is, they were even begging us to take their own little one. Paul said, we were telling them, oh, you people, you know you are poor. You don't have anything. Even this one, please go and manage it yourself. Take care of yourself. He said, no, they were begging us. He said, no, F, allow us to, to participate in this favor, to participate in this grace of helping the poor Christians in Jerusalem. Are you following me? The poor that wants to help another poor. You understand? A poor person helping another poor person. You get it now. Yes. Paul said that they did it not because they were pressured. They did it of their own accord. Even in the midst of extreme poverty, they still consider that little they have shareable. You understand? And the Bible says they receive something. And what is it? The joy. The joy that is in given. The testimony that we are reading today. Just like we read the testimony of the widow, eh? we have their testimony that even in the midst of their poverty, in the season of lack, they still give. Hallelujah. Amen. O kojime nanu dijo toe. Matelu adida se be o cho wa wu to penoroni nanu fale o pe mutete ni me brobe o nanu wu o pe mutete go. O de kuku be vie be ni a demona ye o be ye o ha ye o a po go mele su bo su bo wo wo. Wawom, ti wom, ni elena ame, ti wom wo kola me. Ye so kune po polo bedi. E nyato wonyo, e nume le osu kake yo chonga nanu ame yo kai, nye nyato. To po bedi, e nume le osu, amele keme zi ojo, un to po pe no no nufa. Kon nanu, o de kuku, o be no owe nyo la, e tu po kake o gade kuku dem, bedi, yo wan nanu. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, look at these people. Though they were poor, they were in extreme poverty. Yet, when it came to the time to help other poor people, other poor Christians, they were willing, they were ready. To also contribute to their own. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't say, oh, let the, the other churches who are rich, let those ones be given. No. Even when Paul the apostle and the and his team was uh, you know uh, was begging them and say oh don't worry you people you are poor you don't have don't you keep your own keep your own don't worry you you, you in fact you yourself you need this more you need you need yourself eh? I'm even planning to uh, organize some help for you too so don't worry keep your own they refuse to keep it. They refused to accept that kind of plea. They said no, sir. 
We too must do what? Give. And so, out of what they have, that little which is considered poor, that made them that we are looking at them saying, these people are poor. These people are poor. In fact, the Bible did not just say they are poor. It said they were extremely poor. That extremely poor, yet out of that same poverty, they still gave. They still gave. Amen. Look at verse 12 of that same book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. Paul made a very profound statement there. He said, For if the readiness is there, that is the readiness, the willingness to give, is there, that this is in your heart already. It is acceptable. It's there, that means they, what you give. What you give is acceptable according to what a person has. Not according to what he does not have. Do you understand that? Do you know what Paul is saying there? It's like somebody who has 20 pesos. No, 20 pesos. Like the day I needed that 20 pesos. Desperately. And uh, God now ministered to the heart of that person and said, oh, Go and give Pastor Joseph 20 pesos. And he ministered to the person's heart. Arise now. Go and give that money to Pastor Joseph. This money in your hand. Go and give it to the man. And the person now said, Ah, 20 pesos. Mm. I, I, no, I, no, I should give Pastor 20, 20 CD. Not 20 pesos. 20 CD. See, if the person fails to give that 20 pesos at the moment that God prompted the person to give the 20 pesos, and the person now bring now get 20 CD as of another day, eh, when that time has passed, and he now go and give Pastor 20 CD. In the eyes of God, the person is disobedient. In the eyes of God, the person is not blessed. God wants us to be willing and ready to obey him with whatever we have in our hands. So God says, what you have in your hand now, what you can afford now, like the widow of Zarephah, that little you have, which you consider insufficient for yourself and your family. And God says, give to me out of it. The Bible says, if you are willing, if you are ready, if the readiness is there, if the willingness is there, what you give, with that little you give, is acceptable to God rather than what you don't have that you are wishing that oh I wish I have I would have given that your wish is nothing 
What you have is what you should give. Amen. Amen. So wishing that uh, I wish I I wish I wish I wish I mean to have I have hundred Ghana City. I wish I wish my brother, you don't have hundred Ghana City, but you have ten city. Give that ten city. Be willing to give that one that ten city first. Put it down. Stop wishing. See. If you put down that 10 CD, the blessing that is on the 10 CD will come to you. Is that not so? But you did not put anything down. You are only wishing. You are only wishing. They say if witches were horses, the beggars will ride. But no, witches are not horses. Therefore, beggars don't have them. <laughs> God. God will not judge you for what you don't have. No. He considers what you have in your hand. It is what you have. You have 10 CD. Good. Give that one. Stop wishing. Oh, I wish I have 100 Ghana. I wish I have 100 Ghana. Oh, I wish I have 100 Ghana. And Satan wants to deceive you. He said, eh, keep it until you have 100 Ghana. Eh, next week, by next week, I'm expecting some money. Then I'll give 100 Ghana. No, that moment God asked you to give that 10 CD. Drop that one first. Drop that one first. When the other one now come, you can join it. But don't let the devil. De- there are many people who say, hey, I'm going to give. I'm going to give. Uh, uh, ten, I'm going to give one million liter. I'll give one million liter. I'll give one million liter. Eh? And uh, the ten CD they're supposed to give, they will not give. You know what? You know what they do? They keep their, that ten CD, hoping that they will give hundred Ghana CD later. You know what happens to them? Within the week that they are expecting hundred Ghana CD, the hundred Ghana CD never shows up. So they miss that opportunity. They miss it, and things will begin to happen. And Satan knows, so he will block them. You understand? Amen. But why don't you be smarter than the devil by doing what? By dropping that ten CD first. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to say to yourself, what I have, have is not too small. What I have is not insignificant to the work of God. I will give my own little. I will give my own little to the work of God. Amen. So there is blessing in giving that little in your hand. Give it cheerfully. Give it cheerfully. For if the readiness or the willingness is there first, that is, you are giving it readily, willingly. Not that, not that they twisted you. That is why in this ministry, I don't twist people to give more. Because if you came to church, you have determined to give God 20 CD eh, as an offering. Then I now begin to talk, you know the way these people talk when they want to collect offering. I now begin to talk sweet, begin to talk, uh, you know, you know those kind of talk. That they talk. Uh-huh. Then and I talk. And I begin to make promise. And I carry uh, anointing oil. And I say, yes, God wants to bless somebody today. Yes, uh, open your purse. What you plan to give was 20 city. That's what you were giving. Now, you now, because of everything I've said now, I have twisted your mind, twisted your hand. Now you want to give 50 city. Let me tell you. What you were willing to give is 20 city. Are you following? Yes. It was greed that want you that want, want to add additional thirty. Are you following? Yes. The blessing you will receive is for twenty. That thirty, the remaining thirty CD is your bonus, bonus to the church. You understand? I want you to understand that when it comes to giving to God in everything you do, do it willingly. 
Do it cheerfully. Amen. Amen. Do it what? Cheerfully. Amen. Do it from the heart of faith. Not from greed. You understand? Give cheerfully. Don't consider it too small. Amen. This is very important that we pay attention to these things. It's never too small. It's never too small. It's never insignificant. That money in your hand, that full stuff you have there, it can be a blessing to a fellow brother or sister. It can be a blessing to your to your minister of the gospel who ministered the word of God to you. It can be a great blessing to the advancement of the gospel. Do you remember? Hello? That one day, Jesus needed to feed a multitude of people. Yet, there was no money to buy the food. And Jesus said to his, his disciples, go and look around, go and check what we have. Oh, somebody said, we have just uh, five loaves and two fishes. Then he now had it, they said, say, but what is this? What, what are these compared to the great need? Well, that is, what can this how can this small food, this food of one small boy, what can he do? How can he help over 5,000 men, not counting women? Oh. They have not counted women. Oh. It's only 5,000 men. They did not count the women and children. Oh. You can imagine. So that's why the person said, but what can these, these ones do? It's too small. It's insignificant. It's nothing. Amen. Amen. But when that little boy offered it to Jesus, he gave an offering to the Lord. And with the blessing of the Lord, that little that looked insufficient, insignificant, became significant. Amen. And it fed over 5,000 people. Amen. Amen. So that little you have, don't let the devil de uh, deceive you to think that you should keep it in your pocket or in your purse without giving it. When it comes to the time of giving. So when announcement is made, offering time or the time we are making donations toward the work of God, whatever you have on you, at that moment, give it first. Amen. Drop something out of it. Amen. Amen. Register something for yourself there. Hello. Hi. That widow, she made first a little cake for Elijah. The other widow in Jerusalem, Jesus said, a two copper coin in the eyes of God, by God's standard measurement, was far greater than the offering of everybody, all those rich people put together. 
Because uh, all uh, her own offering was not out of abundance. You know that she get plenty somewhere. You know, you know that she get a uh, uh, five thousand Ghana CD somewhere. She now bring fifty CD. I know. You know if somebody bring fifty CD or you bring five million and drop it now or and say let's offering time and somebody read five million in this ministry as our level now. Somebody read five million. We we'll say ah this person give offering no no be so at our level now. He say ah this person give big offering. You know, ah, this ah five million five million as offering. We we'll say oh glory to God. Somebody has given offering today. Amen. Amen. But that five million is nothing compared to what he still has, he still has at home to waste. Because that five thousand is a free money, he doesn't not, not really need it. It's nothing. It's just the the tip of the iceberg. So he just took five five hundred out of that five thousand, which he could waste at one uh, hotel, go and drink uh, all this kind of nonsense. Uh, we we'll give his girlfriend two thousand Ghana for taxi, and all those. I now bring five hundred to church, and everybody will be praising him. That's out of abundance. But the person who has only five CD, five CD pair, that's all she had at home and everywhere. Nothing else again. No. That's what she hoped to buy. Gary, with uh, uh, what? A uh, granite. Eh? Gary, one CD. Granite, uh, 50, 50, uh, maybe 50 pesos. Then sugar. She calculated everything. Say, okay, I would spend two CD to buy, to feed myself. In the afternoon, I will manage, I'll see how I manage. That five CD, she now takes out of it and say, God, I know that I'm going to, this thing is going to solve, it's going to really cause problem for me, but I'm giving you maybe two CD or even the whole five CD, I'm giving to you out of it. Maybe he gave two CD out of it. That two CD that he gave out of that five CD is more important to God, more valuable to God than the other person who gave five million. In the eyes of men, ah, we'll be praising the other guy who gave five million. But God will be looking at the person who gave that two CD and say, oh, blessed are you. Why? Uh, that one is sacrificial. He's going to suffer for it. You understand? He's going to suffer. You see somebody who come to church and he, he said, Lord, I'm going to give this to the work of God. I determined to give this to the work of God. Maybe he proposed to take a taxi home uh, before. Now he said, no, I'm going to give this thing to the work of God. And he decided to walk home. Instead of taking a taxi, he walked home. That's sacrificial. That's sacrificial giving. That is what we are talking about. That's what Jesus said. That woman gave all she had to live on to the Lord. But these other people, they, they were given out of their abundance. So the way God evaluates our offering is not the same. Pastor may despise the offering and say, ah, this offering, what are you giving? Huh? This one? No, to the eyes of man, it might look live. But God knows the sacrifice you are making. And he will reward you for it. Amen. Let's be on our feet this morning. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that what you have is not too small. It might look small to you. It might seem insignificant to you. Use that little you have to, con to receive the fullness of the commanded blessing. Amen. 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 Amen.
Don't accept that idea, that thought that, oh, it's too small. What can you give? So I want you to begin to pray and give thanks to God for the revelation of his word. As you also, as you make up your mind to be willing, to give willingly and cheerfully. That's what it means to give bountifully. Bountifully means you are giving cheerfully. You are giving cheerfully. You are giving cheerfully. Your, that God, God knows your pockets. He knows what you have. God knows that if you had more, you would have given more. But you have proven to God that you will, have, you will give more if you have more by giving even the little you have. But when you have 20 CD and you cannot even give what God has you to give out of it, ah, and you are saying, hey, but when I have 20, when I have 2,000, I will give God. You are lying. You are lying. You will not give him. So pray and say, Lord, I receive your grace. I receive your grace. I receive your grace. I receive your grace to give cheerfully, to give bountifully, to give sacrificially. I'm giving you my all withholding nothing. Lord, I'm withholding nothing from you. I'm withholding nothing from you. Whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. Whatever you ask me to give, I will give it. I will not withhold anything from you. God told Abraham, give me your son. Your only son, whom you love, give it to me. And he gave. And look at the blessing. He got the blessing. He got a reward from it. There is great joy in obedience. You also can partake of that joy by making your mind to give to the Lord. Pray in the name of Jesus. 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 Tell the Lord, Lord, I am withholding nothing from you. I surrender everything to you. I surrender everything to you. We told him nothing. We told him nothing. We told him nothing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As you are giving, the Lord is increasing you. He increased the widow of Zarephath. He increased the widow of Zarephath. He will increase you too. He will increase you too. He will increase you too. He will open ways for you too. So that you can do more. So that you too can participate in doing more. He that is faithful in little. He that is cheerful in giving little. Will also be faithful and cheerful in giving much more. But he that is that is not ready to give the little that he has, he that is unfaithful in the little, will definitely not be willing or faithful in giving more. Pray and say, Lord, I will withhold nothing from you. I give my all to you. I give my all to you. 